But my sister like Yarna said, Mama Hadima Adre, made it like a watch over. Hadima last night, he got to pip in a at the Bevuna and then Oko, you know, made it like a Tatana and the putter. I get a head to put the in a look at the May. Aiden Katakara, the Makitan, put up at Hadavati, Aka Dana Opita. So when they speak, it's moving and it motivates us as a citizen, as a mother, as a mother of two kids, as a person who works full time, as a business owner. I I think people like myself usually prefer, as they rightfully pointed out. Uh, not that we prefer, but we, we are occupied with our daily lives or our duties at home, that it is very, uh, we prefer to ignore the political aspects of this country or the legal aspects. So unless we are uh, seeking legal support, we would not uh, engage with what's going on much because A, we don't have the time and B, we don't have the knowledge or the understanding as they rightfully pointed out. And I think this was the case for a long time till the crisis. I feel that the crisis was in a way a blessing that, that helped broaden our uh, knowledge about the current political system in this country, the rule of law by which we are governed, or so we think, or so we thought, and um, all the aspects of the citizen sovereign uh, ha, rights. I, I, I first heard this Janata Paramadikare Balaya from Mr. Nadana. That's the first time I heard it. And, I'm, I, and in fact, we had the session explaining exactly what this is. I went to his uh, home, my family, whole family, my husband, and I we went and asked, What's this? We want to understand what this is. As this other gentleman asked, What are these words? We don't, we don't understand these words. But within those words, our rights as a human, as a citizen this, in this country are hidden and wrapped. So my, my husband did a lot of uh, graphics and art and animation during this crisis time. And he did this um, video which said, uh, which was basically Api Aragale, it was titled. And in, in that video, you see inside the book of uh, the constitution, there is a weapon. So inside the book, it's covered. So we don't we don't see. We think we are protected by the constitution. We think that we can seek justice in this country. We think that the people we appoint and send to parliament in order to govern us. Also, we thought now not not even the people we appoint are those that are in parliament now. So so we thought. See, we we have been led to believe all these fantasies of a beautiful democratic country. We love our country, of course it's one of the most beautiful countries in the world, but, and it has um, a lot of natural resources, the people are so good, people are also intelligent, so we, we do have intelligent people, it's just that most of these people, and in fact I think the nationalist was with intent to appoint these intellectuals into the governing body so that though they are not participating in the process of an election and uh, running for the votes of the people that they can still contribute to the governing process uh, with uh, their intellectual capacity or their knowledge or their expertise in those areas. And we see Sri Lankans when they go outside or when they, when they are recognized internationally or uh, if they leave this country for better opportunity, they always shy. Like ev almost every month, we would see of a Sri Lankan who has performed really well in some place. We had an Emmy Award recently. We had an Olympia. We have people in NASA. We have people everywhere. And this is from a small country, from a little population. We have managed to produce people with that kind of quality. So that means we still have, and as uh, as Sugandika pointed out, if our people are going to leave, uh, and which they are, and we are left with the people who have no means to leave, 
So there is resentment. So they want to live, but they can't live. So they are resenting every moment they're spending here. So that is not a good population. They're not, they're not a productive population. Just they're going to be resent. There's resentment that's governing them. And then there is, uh, let's say some of us, you, you, you uh, I mean, uh, Mr. Nagananda um, is one of those people who are still here for some unknown reason, which this reason is unfathomable for most because it's not something tangible. So people are used to measuring a certain person's actions by tangible things. So let's say, okay, why is he here? He wants to run for this and he wants to be president and he wants to go through the same route and he wants to have the same benefits. That's why he's here. Or Ms. Sugandika, she must be here because she has some other benefits. She's looking to run for uh, elections in the future or whatever it is. So they, they are trying to put these puzzles together with what they know already. And it's surprisingly because of that, that the intellectuals or the people with integrity, there is a saying, I don't remember who said this, but I have had this in my mind for a while. Power should be given to someone who doesn't seek it. So that they would, it's not power that they're seeking. It's the role or the responsibility that comes with that title that they're suitable for. So they're not seeking the power. But that is very strange because once it is stigmatized as, as a person running for an election or running to uh, leave the country, is um, by example, the people we have already in parliament, intellectuals or people with integrity don't want to associate themselves with this same lot. And they, they fear that if they come out and say, you know what, I'm going to run for this election, coming election, that the people will say, ah, so that's why this person was in the struggle, that's why this person was talking, or that's why this person was doing all these videos. They will come up and say that. But, but at, the, at the same time, that is also the propaganda, I think more people are thankful for these videos and thankful for the struggle and thankful for all these people talking on behalf of us than willing to judge them on other grounds. But the propaganda machine will push push these negative facts about anyone who is willing to come up and speak the truth or put themselves at risk speaking the truth. They wonder what this is. Now, I remember one, I don't talk much in public, but once I had, uh, I, I, I was accidentally holding the mic for Mr. Nagananda at golf. I was just holding the mic because there was no one and there was no step. And in the night, on that very day at um, close to 12, I get a call from a random person claiming he is, well he didn't have to claim, he was claiming, he was basically threatening me, telling me in Singhala, when Agarandala, Ehema Genala, Ekeke Fata Pavattala, Ahuen Nepa, and this was uh, someone who, uh, by his own admi uh, admission, uh, was uh, with the, our famous 3% uh, crowd, you know, so, I'm not saying it's, it's, okay, so that's a person. He took the trouble to find my number just because I was, I happened to be holding the mic for Mr. Nagananda on a, uh, at call fest while he was speaking about something, you know. So, this is the attitude of the propaganda machine. They are, they straight jump at it. In fact, I actually went and met, I, I have met a lot of people. Um, we have personally, we have interest in that, my husband and I, we go and meet people who come forward as leaders or people who speak for the other people. And I went uh, actually to the 3% and I asked, okay, so what's your plan? Seems like you're very popular, uh, becoming popular. What's your plan? And uh, and especially I asked about Adhikarmaya Swadina Karnwad. Then the answer I got, I won't mention who said it, because that's going to cause another problem. The answer I got is, Api Gila on the other. The Api Gila, a part on the other. Api Gila, Api on the other. It's a hammer, my will, I got to put on the other. Now, here we have uh, trouble with Mr. Nagan, and the, he doesn't have a 
party. And that's a part. We can't have a party in this country also. Now I wanted to actually ask that question. As citizens, let's say we come forward. How do we run? How do we come? Because all these things have been blocked, barriers have been set. So there's no real way. We have to attach ourselves to one of those already existing parties and we have to measure uh, okay, who's less corrupt, who's the lesser evil, who can I stand with on a stage and not get, you know, the same uh, negative stigma that they already carry. How can I come? So then there are people that I know who come and say, you know what, we have to get into the system to make this change, so I'm going to do this. Uh, please support. I get that. I'm like, Okay, so who are you? So that's a huge problem because they, they can't run as independent people. They have to go to a um, party and then who to select. It's, it's, it's an unending thing. And the more I have been uh, made aware of these things, it's like a plague. The number of uh, lawsuits that you have initiated. And apart from that, the things that we hear. Now I heard, Sugandika, uh, you were saying, who owns that land? Not Sri Lankans. So we are saying tourism is our main bread and butter. And tourism is going to save the day. But we have sold our tourist locations to foreign Foreigners. And the money that they are making is not in this country. They are going back to those countries. And this was recently brought to light by certain activists who are also in the struggle, who are living down south, etc. And luckily, thankfully, it came into the media's attention and the media reported it. And there seems to be some action going on. I hope it uh, gets through. So again, it's it's just that we are uh, we as citizens. As people like myself who are not aware, like he, like Mr. Nagana is always accusing, uh, instead of happy gawa sampatak pa gain na tu happy tawa end no anything. After the main gawa sampatak kyan gawa sampatak niya happy thing na karate pada pada in me kai flash ni. Abi to karate dal a porta kyan na maori. I think, but I came here today specifically just so that others like myself would find the motivation to at least. Uh, listen to a very important mistake in our constitution like this. Uh, it's a basically daylight robbery. We have been robbed out of our sovereign rights. So I think this is at least something that we should, if not for the other matters, this is something we should be part of, we should talk of. So I just wanted to say that. I want to thank you uh, and uh, Sudhanika and all here for the efforts God have made so far. Thank you.